College Game Day is covered by State Farm. For auto, home, life, and banking, get to a better state. Left of your screen is Lucas Oil Stadium. In 137 days, we'll have the final four there. And the last time that we had Kansas and Kentucky play in the State Farm Champions Classic, they also met in the national championship game. Is this another prelude for Bill Self and John Calipari as they meet again coming up? Oh, in about two and a half minutes or so, Wildcats and Jayhawks finishing up their warm-up. Jay Will, as you look at this game, what are you looking for early? What's the key? It's about tempo for Kansas. You know, this is a Kentucky team that can throw 10 to 11 to 12 people at you. And I think Kansas, they want to play quick, but you have to pick your spots and when you can compete in transition. If they can't, I think they have to get really good at half-court sets. And we're going to get a chance to check out the conditioning of the Jayhawks, see how good they are. All right, just about time now to tip off Kansas and Kentucky. Big showdown with the two winningest programs in the history of the sport. By the way, I'm going to help out my buddy Stephen A. You wanted DeMarcus Cousins in there. Yeah, I as apologize. A great he's the best in the game. All right. I forgot. He's, he's telling me he's one of the best in the game. You'll see some of the best young players coming up right now. What can you become? Dreaming of that moment when they call your name. Every waking second, building to that day. Glory, honor, champion. But to get there, you gotta work. And right now is the time to make your mark. Ready or not, here I come. You can't hide. Hide, hide. Cut to the sideline, do it right! Quick, quick, quick. You got to go hard. That a way to work, big fella. Both sides. Here we go. Get up high. Move that ball. Let's go. Three dribbles. Move it. Good job, guys. Come out strong. Make a statement. And there is no backing down. Elite teams. Elite talent. It's not that complicated. Let's go. Run. Good job! All the hard work has led to the start of this new season. Kansas, Kentucky in the Champions Classic. It is time for game number two here in Indianapolis, the State Farm Champions Classic. Tonight's game a part of ESPN's Journey to the Tourney, presented by Sonic, a season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament. It is Kentucky. It is Kansas in the second game here in Indy tonight. Hi, everybody, and welcome back for game two. Dan Schulman, glad to be joined by Jay Billis. Kentucky is always a fascinating program to watch. And this year, with some players returning and a big incoming class, we've got a very unusual situation right now, a platoon for the Wildcats. Well, Kentucky has a ridiculous amount of talent. Nine McDonald's All-Americans on this team. The only place they're going to find more McDonald's All-Americans is the McDonald's All-American <laughs> game. It's a ridiculous amount of talent, and to be able to play it all, John Calipari has decided to go with the platoon system, the blue platoon with five guys, the white platoon. They'll go four or five minutes of a time the first 32 minutes. The last eight, he'll make substitutions based on the situation. Now, for Kansas, a terrific team last year, but they've lost Andrew Wiggins, Joel Embiid. They've gone to the NBA. That's the headline, but can this Kansas team be as good, maybe better than last year's team? I think this Kansas team will be better they lost the one and, and three pick in the draft and they're going to be better because they'll be tougher they're better at the point guard position and I think ultimately they will be better defensively but they're going to have to rebound and keep Kentucky off the offensive glass anticipation building a lot of electricity in the air here tonight time now for the starting lineups we send you to PA announcer Michael Grady Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our second game of the 2014 State Farm Champions Classic featuring the Kentucky Wildcats and the Kansas Jayhawks. Let's meet our starting lineups. At guard for Kansas, number zero, Frank Mason the third. Guard for Kentucky, number five, Andrew Harrison. At guard.
Five for Kansas, number one, Wayne Selden and Jr. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. off for Kentucky, number two, Aaron Harrison. At guard for Kansas, number 12, Kelly Oubre Jr. At forward for Kentucky, number 22, Alex Poitras. Forward for Kansas, number 31, Jamari Trailer. At forward for Kentucky, number 12, Carl Anthony Towns. At forward for Kansas, number 34, Harry Ellis. And at forward for Kentucky, number 15, Willie Colley Stein. The head coach for Kansas is Bill Self. And the head coach for Kentucky is John Calipar. Just about ready for game time here in Indianapolis. Kentucky and Kansas and Andy Katz is with Bill Self. All right, thanks, Dan. So, Bill, what have you told your players as to how to handle that size and height of the Kentucky forwards. Well, they are big and long, but when the ball's in the air, nobody has possession of. We got to make sure we get at least 50 percent of those balls, and and uh, we got to attack them. We got to. We can't play side to side. We need to try to drive the ball downhill. A lot of Kentucky blue in this building. How much of this feels like a road game? It's a it's a semi road game. We got a lot of fans here too, but we need this. We need to play in a tough environment. Thanks, Bill. Oh, you bet. Back to you, Dan. All right, Andy, thank you. This is a tough environment. Playing Kentucky anywhere is a tough environment. Playing Kansas anywhere is a tough environment. And as Dick and I discussed in the first game, Jay, what a just a, a great early season uh, baseball, uh, basketball rather, competition here in Indianapolis. As we take a look at the Sonic showdown right now, we just saw Duke and Michigan State and the resumes of their two coaches. And now how about Kentucky and Kansas and the resumes of these two coaches, each of whom has won a national championship, each of whom has been to multiple Final Fours. And it wouldn't shock anybody if one or both of these programs wound up in the Final Four this year. No question. Two outstanding programs, and both these coaches are certain Naismith Hall of Famers with the success they've had, not just at their current jobs, but in prior jobs. They've been amazing. So the blue platoon starting for Kentucky, that has been the case. With the Harrison twins in the backcourt, Poitras, Towns, and Cauley Stein up front. Roughly every four minutes, you will see a switch. And the other platoon, the white platoon, will come in. Although John Calipari said before the game, last eight minutes tonight, they may just play. Uh, whoever is playing the best may just play, but he has stuck to the platoon for the most part. You saw this team at least most of them down in the Bahamas a lot in August in the preseason tournament and exhibition tour down there. They're loaded. They are loaded. This team has nine guys that are McDonald's All-Americans. They got 12 guys that can play, but you can only put five of them on the floor at the same time. And Kansas is talented as well. Kentucky in white, Kansas in blue, and it'll be Kansas ball. Even though Dan Kentucky is bigger, Kansas is still going to want to get the ball inside. They look to move the ball from one side to the other, and their big guys try to get close position and play an angle. Joseph said this morning at shooter after Kansas to be the team they need to be. Wayne Selden and Perry Ellis have to be their two best players, two guys who have been around, Ellis especially. This is Mason at the point. Mason the drive, Mason the floater. Follow no good by Jamari Trailer. Kentucky ball. Kentucky likes to switch screens and exchanges out front. Kansas can slip some of those, take advantage of those switches by screening their own man, especially in ball screen situations on the weak side. This blue platoon is the more experienced of the two groups for Kentucky. Four of them have been here before. The newcomer on this group is Carl Anthony Towns. As Pauly Stein loses it, Towns misses. Loose ball, they hit the deck. Who's got it? Finally, a held ball situation. It will stay with Kentucky. Well, Kansas did a really nice job of guarding that ball screen, and then when the pass was made to the roll guy, they had a very nice rotation. It'll be Aaron Harrison inbounding it for the Wildcats. So Andrew and Aaron, the sophomores now, are back. Aaron, of course, hitting so many clutch shots. Three huge threes for Kentucky in the NCAA tournament last year. Towns turns it over. Oubre. 
Tyson rejected by Kali Stein. Ubre needed to take that all the way himself. Kali Stein blocked shots as well as anybody in the country. He had over a hundred of them last year. Can't worry about getting your shot blocked. You got to take it right into the body of the shot blocker to try to draw the foul and to take up that space. Shot blockers love space. And Andrew Harrison is fouled by Oubre. After Kansas got that turnover, when Kelly Oubre had the ball in the open floor, he needed to take that all the way to the basket. He's a left-hander. Take it and finish it yourself or get fouled. And Mason tried to take it into the body of Alex Poipers. Did a pretty good job of bouncing off of him. But Willie Cauley-Stein came from the back end to block that thing away. Andrew Harrison at the line. And Jay, you look at the Twins, each of whom has lost about 10 or 15 pounds since last year. Big, strong kids, but maybe we'll have a little bit less trouble with smaller, quicker guards this year. Well, they can take them down in the low post and post as well. So it's going to be incumbent upon Kansas if a guy like Frank Mason gets posted up. He's got to get in front, sit on his legs, and wait for help. Ellis driving by Carly Stein, and a strong finish. Perry Ellis has got to be a scorer for Kansas. He's fully capable of it. But that was a walk there. They got away with it. Nice look. Holly Stein lost it on the way up, but a foul call against the Jayhawks. Kansas going with a post-to-post -post double. When the ball went into the low post, they went with the opposite big guy to double-team the post. That means there's got to be a rotation and take away that dive guy, Willie Cauley Stein, just a little bit late. And that is already the second foul of the game by Kelly Oubre Jr. Getting his first start tonight. They wanted to start Oubre. He only played four minutes against UC Santa Barbara. It was a really good team with Alan Williams as their best player. But Oubre with this length and athleticism. They wanted to get a little more size in. That cannot happen for Kansas. Speaking of length and athleticism, Carl Anthony Towns, freshman from Piscataway, New Jersey, with a putback. Sometimes for this Kentucky team, Dan, the best offense is a missed shot. Yeah, they're such a great offensive rebounding team, but on a free throw blockout, that cannot happen. Mason, trailer had an altered at the rim. Mason is fouled and will head to the line. And Watch Carl Anthony Towns here in that second slot. He just doesn't give up and continues to try to get into the middle of the lane. And Trailer just had his hands down. The ball went right past his shoulder and went right into the hands of Carl Anthony Towns, who has great hands. The national, Gatorade National Player of the Year in high school last year as Mason heads to the free throw line for the Jayhawks. And Mason had a terrific game as a freshman last year in this Champions Classic against Duke. He had a career-high 15 points in that game. He's really attacked in the open floor, attacked off the dribble, and he's attacked in this game. These two programs met in the inaugural Champions Classic back in 2011. Kentucky emerged victorious 75-65. to The ball pressure by Mason, making it difficult for Kentucky to start its offense. Look how far out they're having to catch the ball. That's what UConn did to Kentucky in the national championship game. They made them start their offense out 30 feet away from the basket. Holly Stein does not need to be guarded out there. Looking inside for Towns. Forces it up. No basket. There is a foul on Kansas on Trailer. His first. Well, Trailer is not a small guy, but when. Perry Ellis left. He had a double team to start on Carl Anthony Towns. And when he left, that allowed Towns to go one on one in the post against Trailer. And Towns is really skilled. Long arms. His feet are gigantic. I wonder if he's going to continue to grow with feet that size. He's like one big L. <laughs> what is his best attribute? He's, he's really skilled. So he can play out on the floor, he can hit a perimeter jumper. He really runs the floor well, and he's a very good passer. So you can play through him in the post, and he doesn't he doesn't need the ball to play. He's easy to play with, and he's really hard to play against. Bill Self has sent Ubre to the bench. He's got a couple of fouls. Devontae Graham, a freshman from Raleigh, into the game and out for the Jayhawks. Mason nearly steals it. Ball's loose. 
And it's going to be another tie, but this one will go to Kansas. Well, not a smart play by Kentucky once they got that ball after the block shot. You've got to secure that and take it the other way. Towns just erased that shot by Devontae Graham. You're going to have to get a drive that's off of a pass or two. The initial drive when the defense is set, you're just driving right into shot blockers. Would it be a shock to you if anybody other than Kentucky led the nation in block shots this year? It would be surprising. Between Pauly Stein and Towns, the length they've got. They've got, they've got five guys with a wingspan of seven foot or better. Wayne Selden knocks down the jumper, and Kansas is on top. Kansas is really doing a nice job of extending its defense. So far, Kentucky hasn't gotten anything easy. Aaron Harrison for three. Aaron Harrison has really improved his game. He's not only a good shooter, but he's much better this year coming off of ball screens. His middle game has improved, and he's playing with greater pace. Good switch. They're switching every exchange. You've got to really attack those switches. Mason looking for help. Ellis thinking about it. Takes it. Still loose. Towns. Wild sequence to Collie Stein. Poitras is the trailer. And it's Kansas ball. Well, it looked like Poitras got hit on that shot. There was no call. You better go up strong in this game. In a lot of states, that might be a felony. <laughs> Zeldin off the screen. Off the back of the iron, and down with the rebound is Towns. I don't think Kansas wants to settle for jump shots. They've got to be tough enough mentally to get the shot that they want. It'll be a line change for Kentucky. Now Ellis, he's going to try to take it the length of the court. And rejected by Poitras. And Kentucky turns it over. Mason will draw the foul. We'll get a whistle and a chance for everybody to catch their breath here in Indianapolis. When we come back, a line change. Here comes the white platoon. The blue platoon will be heading to the bench. This Kentucky pencil's got a lot of erasers. <laughs> ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. For auto, home, life, and banking, get to a better state. Gildan, we make your favorite activewear, underwear, and socks. At Gildan, every thread counts. And Toyota, let's go places. We had players return that I didn't expect to return. Somebody came in my gym the other day and said, if you play seven guys, do you know how good you'd be? And I said, yeah, but what if your son were one of those three not playing? How would you feel then? I want to try to do everything I can to make sure these kids all have a chance to eat. So at least as of now, it's a 10-player rotation. The blue platoon now on the bench. The white platoon has come into the game for the Wildcats. Let's welcome in Hall of Fame coach Jim Calhoun, a part of our broadcast family now at ESPN. Coach, what, when you hear the two-platoon system, what do you think? I get nervous that he has too many weapons. <laughs> in all honesty, uh, it's an amazing thing, but I don't know how well it's early in the season you're going to do it. He's going to play these kids. My great concern is eight minutes to go, six minutes to go, who's playing for them? Yeah, they're going to break out the platoon, which I think they almost happen. By the way, just quickly on this game, tempo, and I think guys would admit, becomes critical for Kansas. Run when you can, but don't make it a wild show. I think that's exactly right, to be able to attack and have the smarts to pull it out and force Kentucky to guard, where you can put them into isolation, move it from side to side. And I still think that Kansas can and should get the ball inside. Try to get into the bodies of these shot blockers rather than give them the space to be able to race those. They've already blocked three shots and they've changed a couple others. Let's tell you a little bit about the white platoon. Three freshmen, including that's Tyler Eulis, 5'9". Number three down in the corner. And Devin Booker is another freshman. Trey Lyles as well, along with returnees to Kari Johnson and Marcus Lee. Nine of the ten players you have seen in the game for Kentucky are McDonald's All-Americans. Willie Colley Stein is the only one of the ten who was not a McDonald's All-American as a Kansas freshman 
Cliff Alexander is called for the foul. Well, Alexander is going to have to play with his feet and not his hands. He just grabbed Dakari Johnson there. And Alexander is not a small man. He looks small out there with the size of Kentucky. How about the touch from Eulis? Tony and Tyler Eulis is an outstanding point guard. He puts pressure on 94 feet. He is always down in the stance. He rarely makes a mental mistake, and he's an outstanding shooter. In the game now for Kansas, 17-year-olds. As we have an offensive foul going against the Jayhawks, 17-year-old Jay Sviatoslav Mikhailuk, a 6'8 freshman from Ukraine. He is number 10 and a guy with a, a terrific skill set, a very good shooter. And that's the second foul on Cliff Alexander. In just a couple possessions, wow. he's out of the game. So Alexander heads to the bench with two. Landon Lucas is into the game now for Kansas. So early foul trouble for the Jayhawks. Oubre and Alexander, a couple of freshmen, each with two fouls, less than six minutes into the game. What's the over-under on mispronunciations of Sviatoslav <laughs> Mikhailu? Well, he can make it easy on you. His teammates call him Speed, so we can stick with that. And now an over the back call going against Kentucky. You know, when you talk about rebounding with Kansas and having to box out, it's one thing to say you've got to box out your man, but Kentucky does such a good job of driving the ball that you're oftentimes going to be in rotation, and then you've got to get a rotation rebound. So you're blocking out a guy that is not your man, that may be bigger than you, that you're not usually guarding. And their offensive rebounding prowess is really impressive. They're going to score a lot of points off second shots. In, in a different way, kind of reminds you of the old Georgetown teams where the best play in their playbook was get it up on the rim and go get it. And, and Kentucky does a lot of that. Well, they'll drive, you help, they just lob it up to the rim for a dunk. Now on Devin Booker, 6'6", freshman of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Well, one of the reasons I think this platoon system has a great chance of working is these guys can go all out for four or five minutes without fear of getting tired. They're going to get subbed. And they can just wear teams down, wear them out, and foul them out. There's the post-to-post -post double in rotation. Good drive by Ulis. Kick to Booker. A good position for Lee. Oh, that is really pretty basketball. Get the ball inside, kick it back out, reverse it, then get it inside again. Now the full court pressure by Kentucky. Big Blue Nation on its feet here in Indy. And they are really putting the pressure on Kansas right now. Frenzied environment. And Kansas is going to have to be tough to get through this. Ellis with the spin. Left it short. Lyles who went to high school right here in Indianapolis. Number 41 for Kentucky. A much improved Dakari Johnson misses the shot. And it's out of bounds to Kansas. Once the ball went inside and was reversed, that was a terrific post pass by Devin Booker to get the ball inside to Marcus Lee. He was isolated in the post. You don't see many of those running hooks anymore. <laughs> really well done by Marcus Lee. Jay, Kansas just two for 12 from the field. How much is that? It's just the size of Kentucky altering the shot. Well, most of it. I mean, Kansas is trying to drive the ball and get downhill to the basket, but they're having to shoot over tremendous size and length. It will stay with the Jayhawks. And I think this platoon system, Dan, is like body punches in a prize fight. That over the course of the game, especially in the second half, you can see a team like Kentucky wearing on an opponent. And you can see the, the white platoon, or the blue platoon, whoever's sitting on the bench right now. <laughs> Blue's on the bench right now. They're getting a blow. Yep. They come back in fresh, and they're going against a Kansas team that may be a little bit gassed as we get toward the end of the first half. And it's not really starters and a second unit. The white platoon will start the second half. The minutes have generally been even. It's very early. There's another block. This one by Lee. The pass. Stolen away. And a layup at the other end for Mason. Well, that was a really good read by Mikhailu because I thought that pass was going to get through. Euless saw a cutter going to the basket. And that was a really nice steal. You know, for all the foul trouble, missed shots, blocked shots, Kansas is down three. The double team, Johnson gets out of it. Kentucky spacing wasn't very good on that double team. 
You need to be able to look opposite and kick that thing out. Eulis, the drive and the kick. Three to shoot. One to shoot. Booker gets it off. Lee runs it down. That can't happen. And Booker lays it in. What a cut by Devin Booker. And the lead back to five for Kachuk. And just played 35 seconds of really good defense and didn't finish it up with a, a defensive rebound. Look at Lucas doing some work on the glass and he draws the foul. That'll take us to the under 12 media timeout. We may see a new platoon when we come back. Wildcats leading the Jayhawks by five. Back in Indy, Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, game two with the State Farm Champions Classic. And Jay, it feels like we'll be talking about Kentucky and their ability to block shots all season long. Well, Kentucky's offense hasn't been great. Their defense has been spectacular. Perry Ellis taking the ball down the court. The first defender flies by, but Alex Poitras continues in pursuit to knock the ball away from behind. Again, as long as you do not foul a driver, there's space there. Carl Anthony Towns takes it right out of the air, starts a break. You get into the body of a defender, Willie Colley Stein comes from behind to wipe it away. Devin Booker smart enough not to foul. Marcus Lee wipes it away. Five block shots thus far, even more shot changes by Kentucky, and you can see 10 guys 6'6 six, or six taller, four of them 6'10 or taller, and you got five guys that have wingspans of over seven feet. That's a lot of length that can block and bother shots in that lane. By far the tallest team in college basketball. It's a five point lead for the Wildcats. As Lucas misses the first free throw, five blocks already for Kentucky. Marcus Lee with two. And Alex Poitras, Willie Pauly Stein, and Carl Anthony Towns, each with one. And Kentucky could have a much bigger lead if they would run some better half court offense. They haven't gotten some things in transition, but they need to run better offense and get better shots. They've turned the ball over too much. Towns the kick. Hand off. Aaron Harrison off the glass. No good. Follow no good. They got it again. Well, as much as we may see blocks at one end, we may see second opportunities at the other end all season long for Kentucky. A kickball. Well, somebody who knows a thing or two about block shots is Jim Calhoun, whose Connecticut team led the country, it seems, year after year. Coach, how impressed are you with what you've seen? Well, yeah, I'll tell you what's really set it up, and Jay made a great point about it. The ball pressure is the best I've seen out of Kentucky in an awful long time. That's leading to the block shots. We were fortunate enough to lead the country nine straight years in block shots, although this team can really block shots, and the ball pressure, I think, is exquisite. They're doing a great, great job of pressuring the basketball. You know, Coach, you talk about rim protection. Right now, it's been rim covering. Well, the saran wrap is up there. You can see the saran wrap right in the rim. When it looks like it's going in, a hand gets in the way. And yeah, that gets in your head as a player. You start looking for the shot block. It affects your ability to complete plays. You stop short, and then all of a sudden, you're missing shots and not getting a block. Well, it's not normal for, for a team not to go inside and attack, but you can against this team right now. Kansas tried again to no avail for Jamari Trailer. This is kind of like trying to play Frisbee in the Redwood Forest. <laughs> <laughs> and a foul before the shot attempt. More great action to come in your way later on this week. The Puerto Rico tip-off begins Thursday morning on ESPNU. ESPNU rather concludes Sunday with a championship game on ESPN2. Texas A&M and Dayton, Charleston, and UConn among the matchups you'll see as Kylie Stein gets a lay-in and a foul, and Kentucky is having their way with Kansas right now, and Bill Self needs a timeout. Just a simple little out-of-bounds play, a little back screen for Willie Cauley-Stein. They emptied out the right side of the floor, the screen by Harrison, and they just lob it up and then foul on top of it. Kentucky gets anything they want right now against Kansas. Well, Kentucky has shown why they come into the season as the number one ranked team in the country with the talent and the length and the depth that John Calipari has uh, seemingly an embarrassment of riches right now. They lead 19 to 9 over Kansas. I don't think John's embarrassed. <laughs> I think he likes it. Yeah, I think he does too. He's been to three Final Fours in the last four years, won a national championship, 
A couple of years back, 10-point lead as Collie Stein heads to the line for the Wildcats. You know, of the many things that are that's really impressive about this Kentucky team. Another offensive rebound. Wow. Wow. I mean, if you can't keep them off the line and you can't keep them out of the lane on a free throw blockout, what chance do you have five on five with a live ball? You have got to be able to get a free throw blockout. And right now, Kansas isn't able to even do that. Now, Perry Ellis is big and strong, and he's a terrific athlete. And Alex Poitras has just bullied him into the lane. When he got that second one up, that's the rotation blockout that Jamari Trailer wasn't able to get. And Sheldon Jr. throws it away. And right now, 10 minutes and change in. Kansas is overmatched. Well, they just have to keep fighting. They, they should be down by more right now, but it's just 12 points in the grand scheme of things. They get a couple of plays and a couple of stops. They can feel like they're back in this thing. Andrew Harrison got it. Well, that's a great job of looking opposite when the double team comes. And another timeout taken by Bill Self. Well, Dan, we talked about Carl Anthony Towns, the freshman. The ball goes inside. Here comes the double team, the rotation down, and he immediately looks opposite to the one. When you double team, you've got to shut off that opposite pass. That ball has to go out ball side where there is a complete denial. Kentucky has dominated everything having to do with the paint. They are dominating the glass, offensive rebounds, the points that come from offensive rebounds, and block shots. It has been the big guys that have dominated everything. This is a team, even coaches who are winning don't often have fun, but he's having fun right now. This is a team that trailed the University of Buffalo at the half and into the second half before they outscored them 38 to 14 in the second half to win a few days ago. They're now on a 19 to 3 run to lead by 15 here over the fifth ranked team in the nation. Well, Buffalo is a well coached team and a good team. But Kentucky did not play with this kind of passion yep. and energy in the first half in Rupp Arena against Buffalo. This is a totally different Kentucky team than Buffalo saw. And the foul going on Poitras to the line. Kylo just turned 17 in June. But he's had experience at the European 16 and under championships. Did very well at the European 18 and under championships. And even played, competed for Ukraine at the FIBA World Championships this past summer. Got into the game against the USA. So for a young man, a wealth of big time experience. And he's got a great feel. He can really shoot it, an excellent passer. He's got good defensive instincts. He'll be a starter before the season's over. Now trouble has not helped the Kansas cause in this game. With Oubre and Alexander both picking up two fouls in the opening minutes. Poitras held, and he'll head to the free throw line. The 2K Classic begins Thursday on ESPN2. It's Texas and Iowa, then Syracuse and Cal with a championship game Friday night, 7.30 Eastern time on ESPN2. Another great early season tournament. What are you expecting from the Orange this year? A lot of obviously change from the team a year ago. Yeah, Caleb Joseph at the point, Chris McCulloch, they got some really good newcomers, and they're going to be very good. I think the issue is how good is their offense going to be? Trevor Cooney's going to have to knock shots down for them to be really, really good. But defensively, they'll be the same Syracuse we see every year that makes it really difficult to score. And then one thing that Kansas is doing, they're laying off the big guys out top, so Kentucky's able to reverse the ball anytime they want to. You pressure all the guards, but they can give the ball up to a wide open big guy up top, and then immediately look inside. They're just gonna pick you apart. They're good passers. And willing passers, too. Really sharing the ball. Brandon Green into the game for Kansas, number 14, even shooter. Mason the drive. Got it up on the rim, but the rebound secured by Towns. Andrew and Aaron Harris. 
Davis in the backcourt, Polly Stein, Towns, and Poipers up front now for Kentucky. Deep one. And the rebound down to Green. Well, Aaron Harrison looks really good this season. He had a really good summer, played very well over in the Bahamas when Kentucky played that six games in eight days on tour. Nice pass. And a foul. Polly Stein saying he had all ball. He did have all ball. Maybe there was some body, but there wasn't very much body. That was a meeting at the summit, and Willie Colley Stein had all leather with the left hand. Now let's take a look going to break. The foul called there on Polly Stein. The bad Coach. call, and you can see it right away. Anytime you take the ball to the basket, you would be be you'd better be prepared for a meeting at the summit. Now, if you want to say there was body contact, that's a foul. But up top, it doesn't get cleaner than that. The foul called on Collie Stein. It's a 16-point lead for John Calipari's Wildcats. Let's go back to Jim Calhoun. Coach, what does Kansas have to do to make a dent well, to this Well, you know, last session, the first time I saw them block out five men, they had got to do that. Secondly, Jay mentioned high-low. How about giving the big guy the shot? Right now, that's your best chance. They, they, they can't ball pressure at the top guy, and they're not getting much pressure, I realize, and they maybe can extend out something they did early in the game. They've got to stay around, hopefully get within 10 or 12, and then make a game in the second half. But right now, great word, survival mode. But it's a ball game. we still got uh, almost eight minutes to play. Exactly right. There's a lot of time left, but without getting stops and without getting a defensive rebound, Kansas can't get out in transition and try to get something ahead of Kentucky's defense. They got to start playing ahead of the defense. If they're going to play half court against Kentucky and trying to take the ball to the basket against those shot blockers, it's going to be a long night for Kansas. White platoon back in now for the Wildcats. Kentucky is out rebounding Kansas 21 to 10. And Kentucky has seven offensive rebounds to six defensive rebounds for Kansas. So Kentucky Jay is getting more than half of their misses off the glass. Yeah, and a couple of those have been off this free throw here. Yeah. It is awfully difficult to box these big guys out when you're put into rotation. Lyles the miss. Now with the rebound is Graham. Kansas is 1-0 on the season. They defeated the Gauchos, UC Santa Barbara, 69 to 59 on Friday. Kentucky comes in 2-0. With the wins over Grand Canyon and Buffalo. Kentucky, or Kansas's big guys have got to get out and set some ball screens and get these big guys away from the bucket. And now, on the screen action, Green is called for the foul for the Jayhawks. And Bill Self keeps looking at the bench, trying to figure out who he can put in there who might stem the tide a little bit. And after that little handoff, Green just went right into the body of Devin Booker. Little pick play, really. The funny part, Kentucky's got 26 points, and they haven't been incredibly efficient on the offensive end. There's Booker off the screen, open in the corner. How pretty was that? Good read. And guess what? An offensive foul and another foul drawn. This time it'll be Trey Lyles heading to the line. Booker made a really nice read coming off that baseline screen. The defender went over the top. He faded into the corner, set his feet. And Trey Lyles just doesn't give up on it. He's trying to be boxed out in a rotation by Brandon Green, Jamari Trailer. And all these big bodies for Kentucky just keep going to the offensive glass. As we mentioned, from right here in Indianapolis, Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana. Stroke as he knocks down a pair. Nine different Wildcats have scored. And this is the platoon that can press full court. They've got three guys that can really get up and guard, two guys that can block shots and guard in the post. And Kansas has got to draw those defenders, Lee and Johnson, away from the bucket. And Kailu shows his shooting ability. How pretty is that? Sets his feet quickly. Quick release. Every time he shoots it in practice, it looks like it's going in. And it's a 13-point lead for the Wildcats. 
Booker open again. Too strong offensive rebound to Kari Johnson. And now all 10 Kentucky players who have played in this game have scored. The platoon system seems like it's working. <laughs> And John Calipari, he's got 26 minutes of basketball left, but boy, what he's seen in the first 14, he's got to be absolutely thrilled. With. Boy, it's awfully nice when you miss shots where you're shooting again. I mean, Kansas' first shot defense hasn't been bad. Their second shot defense has been. I mean, they've not finished up defensive possessions with a defensive rebound. Graham with a tough shot, down with the rebound is Lee. Kentucky, on the other hand, has limited Kansas to one challenge shot and nothing more. Good inside outside interaction. Nice. Johnson, nice look to Booker. Pretty offense, but Booker having trouble from the perimeter. Kentucky's just out fighting Kansas on the glass. This is not size, it's fight. And here comes the blue platoon. And right now, a couple of Kansas guys are bending over at the waist looking on more. They got more of them? Well, I tell you, they got nothing on the PA announcer. I mean, Michael Brady's working his tail off tonight because every three, four minutes, he's got to <laughs> announce, he's got to announce five new players. Trailer knocks it away. And a timeout is called. That's Towns down there. It is, and he'll call a timeout to retain possession. These are the kinds of numbers that Kentucky will track often this year. How many minutes each platoon is getting and how effective each platoon has been. They haven't been platoons. They've been battalions on the glass. Yeah. And platoon is underselling these guys the way they have played on the glass. And they've, begun, they've pursued the ball relentlessly. And John Calipari will not use the word subs. The, use, the word he uses is reinforcements. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Everything he's tried tonight has worked. Uh, all right, let me take a guess. Middle of March, postseason, Kentucky trying to make a run. Do you think the platoon system is still in effect? Yes. I think it can work uh, all season long because you can play so many guys, you can wear your opponents down. Now, are you going to be wedded to playing guys five minutes, five minutes, five minutes the entire game, every single game? Of course not. You're going to have foul trouble. You're going to have some games where you're played zone exclusively and you want to have better shooters in for a longer period of time. Or maybe one group is, is ultra hot. You want to leave them in there a little bit longer. Scramble for it. And it'll be Kansas ball. One thing that John Calipari has convinced his players of, and again, it's very early in the season, is that to get drafted high, in the NBA to move on to the next level. You don't have to score 20 points per game. And I think recent history clearly agrees with that, that NBA scouts will see whether you play 12 minutes or 36 minutes in a game, if you play at a high level, you're going to be on their radar. Well, Kentucky's 2012 team is an example. You see Kentucky switching all these exchanges on the dribble handoffs out top. But Anthony Davis was the, the best player in the country in 2012. National player of the year, number one pick in the draft. He was fifth on Kentucky's team in shot attempts that year. Fifth. Well, you're not going to hide talent from the NBA. It's not going to be, they know, it's not going to be hidden. And they're not counting shots. They're looking at your productivity per minute, and they're not just looking at your ability to score. They're looking at the other things that you can do to help a team win. Holly Stein off to Poitras. Good ball movement, a lot of sharing again by the Wildcats. Poitras for three. And trailer down with a rebound for KU. Calhoun said, do they make a run here within 10 or 12, regroup for the second half. It's at 15 right now. Just very little of the, if anything, in the way of post-up opportunities for Kansas. Tough turnaround by Selden. Offensive rebound rejected, but Kyler gets it back. He'll put it up. Alexander is fouled. With Alexander back into the game and making his presence felt. Got an NBA doubleheader coming your way tomorrow night. The defending NBA champion San Antonio Spurs take on the Cleveland Cavaliers. What a match if that is. Then the Lakers and the Rockets in the late game tomorrow night right here on ESPN. That is the second foul on Holly Stein. All right, we talked so much about the Kentucky freshman. Tell me about Cliff Alexander. Cliff Alexander 
is an outstanding prospect. And the thing that really impressed me about that last possession, he got the ball inside, got it blocked, got it wiped away, and he didn't quit on the play. He wound up going after that offensive rebound, didn't quit, and stayed strong. I mean, he's, he's got good skill, but he's really a, an excellent rebounder, big body, long, very strong. And I think he's, he's going to be a really good player. Down to 13 as we near the final four minutes. There are three freshmen in the game right now for Kansas. Mikhailos Alexander, but Oubre has returned with two fouls as well. And the foot of Aaron Harrison, he regroups. Finds his brother. Andrew off to Towns for the easy lane. Andrew Harrison gets the ball near the basket going against Frank Mason. He's got a huge size advantage. What a pretty drop off to Carl Anthony Towns. You can see Towns has great hands. Kailu gets free. Tipped up, no good. Follow, no good. And finally down with it, Towns. You know, some of the Kentucky guards have to get down and rebound on the defensive end. You know, they're letting the two big guys rebound. And they've got to get down there and rebound as well. They can't take off until Kentucky has secured the ball. They're kind of leaking out right now. Aaron Harrison. Now you would imagine his confidence went up after what he did in the NCAA tournament a year ago. And there certainly appears to be a carryover into his sophomore season. And Kentucky's scary. And I still don't think they are playing anywhere near as well as they can play on the offensive end. Where they've been awesome is defensively. But look at that. That's about as clean of a jump shot off a of one dribble pull up as you're going to get. And Aaron Harrison, John Calipari told him today at practice, you are going to play great offensively. And he is looking for his shot. His middle game has really improved. He's much better off of ball screens this year, playing with pace. And it's a 35-17 lead. Bill Self has used three timeouts here in the first half. You know, we're talking a lot about Kentucky, or at least I am, rightfully so. The funny part, Kansas is good. This is a really the number five team in the country for a reason. This is going to be, this is and is going to be a really good basketball team. But that's how well Kentucky has played on the defensive end. They have made Kansas look less than really good. And they are really good. We saw a Duke team play well in the first game, a 10 point win over Michigan State. Led by some of their great freshmen, including Okafor, Tyus Jones, Justice Winslow. Duke has a chance to be elite. And I'll tell you what, Michigan State is going to be really good before the season's over. There are a couple players down with injuries. Seldon buries the three. Nice drive by Ellis from the top to set that up for Seldon. It's been a while since Kansas has seen a ball go through the net cleanly. Good ball pressure by Mason, forcing Andrew Harrison to give it up. Well, Lyles moves well without the ball. He's really making Perry Ellis run. Right now, Lyles is not on his normal platoon. This is the first time we've seen a switch. This is the blue platoon, but Lyles is in for Pauly Stein. Now, they were working on Pauly Stein over on the bench. Not sure exactly what the problem is. Great fake. Still loose. Kansas ball. And another rejection. Pythos with a clean block, and then a foul on the follow-up shot. Well, that was a foul, but make them think about it. And Kansas right now is thinking about it. Everything is challenged, Dan Schulman. Everything wiped away. The second block from behind by Alex Poitras. And Kentucky has defended well. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Sonic's new boneless chicken wings. And Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you gotta get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. 204 to go in the first half here in Indianapolis. Dan Schulman and Jay Billis. 35 20 Kentucky over Kansas. As you said, Jay, their offense has been great. Their defense has been unbelievable. Well, shot blocking allows you to extend your defense without fear of getting beat. So Kansas is starting its defense 35, 40 feet from the basket. All of a sudden, a one dribble move to the basket is angled out, and it takes two, three dribbles to get to the basket, and shot blockers can recover and just camp out in the lane. 
and then even in transition, you've got outstanding athletes that are coming from behind to wipe away shots. Whether it's Willie Cauley Stein or Trey Lyles or Takari Johnson, Marcus Lee, shot blocker, shot blocker, <laughs> shot blocker. I mean, it's, these guys are getting carpal tunnel syndrome from knocking <laughs> balls away from the rim. John Calipari's gone back to the white platoon now for the last 2.04 of the half. Kelly Oubre Jr. is at the line for Kansas, a freshman from New Orleans. What does he bring to the program? A slasher that is very good in transition, can get to the rim. He can be a very good def uh, defender and I think a really good offensive rebounder. He's going to get better and better. He's a pro. And a early foul, so he has played sparingly in this one despite starting. A slice, stagger action that was defended very well by Kansas. Johnson. And the jump hook. Johnson, another guy, has lost some weight. And you, know, you can see as he makes moves and runs up and down the court, Jim. He's just got uh, a lot more life in his game this year than he had last year. Mobility greatly improved, but he's always had really good feet down in the post. Oubre muscling his way in. And there's that slashing ability. A moral victory of sorts for Kansas to get it down close to 10 before the end of the first half. It's at 14 right now. The Kentucky Wildcats have blocked eight shots in the half. The Jayhawks are shooting only 21% from the field. Eulis. A little strong. He usually doesn't miss those. Tyler Eulis is really, really good. Always under control. He knocks, knocks open shots down like crazy. Oubre for three. Boy, what a presence he's been in the last couple of minutes. Guy only played four minutes against UCSB and did not score. Got off to a slow start in this one, but he's starting to catch fire and feel good about himself. Booker, no. Kansas ball. They can get it down to single digits. Mason. Alexander. And it's a nine-point game. Timeout, John Calipari. How about Kansas hanging in there, Dan? That's playing ahead of the defense. Getting a stop, taking it the other way, and not having to go five on five against shot blockers inside. When you play ahead of the defense, you can get some easy opportunities, the chance for a second, uh, second shot. Oubre shooting right in the face of Trey Lyles. And then Mason keeping his head up, going right into Tyler Eulis. He had a, a chance to go ahead and get somebody his own size on that one. <laughs> An 11 to 2 run for the Jayhawks, showing a lot of life here at the end of the first half. A little more concern now on the face of John Calipari. Well, Kansas cleans up the defensive class. They have a good, they, they've had some very good defensive possessions on their first shot defense but they've allowed too many second chance opportunities. They don't allow that, and all of a sudden, they're back in the game. 24 seconds away from the Mazda halftime report. He's Davis, Seth Greenberg, Jay Williams. So look at the first half block party for the Wildcats, and a look back at the Duke win over Michigan State as well. The marathon continues in the State Farms Champion Classic at Indianapolis. A one stop here by Kansas, and the Jayhawks feel really good going into halftime. Johnson. And a foul on the play. Boy, he is just bullying his way as close to the rim as he possibly can. Well, Kentucky is making Kansas make decisions. If you're going to go one-on-one -on -one in the post, they're going to get the ball inside, and they're going to muscle their way to the basket. If you double them, they have done a very good job of passing opposite and getting something good. But it really comes down to Kansas's ability to rebound. When they have rebounded, they've had some success. When they haven't, it's been all Kentucky. Green into the game for Kansas. Another shooter. They'll have the ball if they can control the glass. Made free throw. Makes it a 10-point game. 4.3 seconds in the half. Seldon Frank Mason can get this ball all the way to the rim in this amount of time. They trap Mason. He gets out of it. Two seconds. First half in which it looked like Kentucky might run Kansas right out of the building or might block them right out of the building. Kansas makes a run near the end and they get back with intent. Still the half dominated for the most part by the Wildcats, especially at the defensive end. Andy Katz is with John Calipari.
All right, thanks, Dan. Well, John, you told us you wanted a game like this against a team like Kansas. What do you think of the first 20 minutes? I thought we defended really well. Um, I like how guys are battling right now. They're, they're tough shots. We left the corner three. Trey got scored on a couple times late. I went to that other group late. We need to see how you going to finish. How will you make plays? And they struggle, but it's good. We're learning. So what are you going to do to start the second half in terms of how you're going to platoon? We're, gonna, we're platooning like we are. And we're, there's no subs. These are reinforcements. We're just coming at them. We've got the verbiage. Thanks. Back to you, Dan. <laughs> All right, Andy. We've heard it before. We'll hear it again. Reinforcements for the Wildcats. They're up 10 at the half. Mazda halftime report. Reese, Seth, and Jay coming up. Welcome back to the State Farm Champions Classic here in Indianapolis. This is game two. Number five, Kansas, number one, Kentucky, all a part of ESPN's journey to the tourney presented by Sonic. It was an impressive performance, to say the least, at the defensive end by the Kentucky Wildcats. Felt kind of like a 25-point game. It was 18 at one point, but it's only 10 at the half, Kentucky leading KU. Well, Kentucky was really impressive, especially on the defensive end with their ability to block shots. They were also excellent in the first half of the game on the offensive glass. Got a lot of second chance opportunities. Tell you what, give Kansas a lot of credit. Yeah. They fought back at the end of that first half. They kept Kentucky off the offensive glass, limited them one shot, and then they attacked the other end to, to make it. They could have been blown out of here. Yeah. It's uh, just a 10-point game, and they have got to do a better job of moving the Kentucky big guys around and getting them out on the floor so they can't camp out in the lane and they can attack the basket a little bit more all 10 Kentucky players scored in this game and for Kansas at the end the rebounding really balanced out as well at one point the rebounds were 21 10 Kentucky they're now 26 24 Kentucky and Kansas actually has more offensive rebounds than Kentucky does let's visit with Andy Cax now who had a chance to visit with Bill Self yeah adding to your point there Dan Bill did tell me that he was appreciative of the way these guys responded toward the end of the first half, battling them on the boards, and wasn't upset with their hustle plays. But more than anything, he says, they have to drive to pass, not just drive to shoot here in the second half. Well, Jay, I know you feel they've got to move the big man of Kentucky around a little bit as well. Right? I don't think they can let those big guys just camp out in the middle of the lane. They've got to, the big guys from Kansas have got to get out, set some ball screens, move those guys around, and then they can attack. It is the white platoon. It starts the second half for Kentucky. The Blue platoon started the game. Dakari Johnson trying to back down Jamari Trailer, and he succeeds. Kentucky moved the ball. That was just too easy. That was a 25-foot pass that went right into the post and went to Dakari Johnson. You give him the ball that deep, he's going to score or get fouled or both. Mason on the drive with a floater too strong, and down with a rebound, Trey Lyons. Well, off the initial drive without a pass, but at least that was a floater instead of trying to long jump to the basket where Kansas has gotten shots blocked or changed. That's a much better opportunity. Wow, Lyle showing some skill at the offensive end. That guy's 6'10". That was a move made by a 6'10 guy. He is really good. One dribble, pull up jumper from the elbow. But look how much ground he covered in that one dribble. He caught the ball right by Kenny Payne on the bench. Yeah, he must have covered 15, 17 feet on that one dribble. And a terrific start here in the second half of the Wildcats. Ellis puts it on the floor, can't finish. And the rebound down to Marcus Lee. One time there were five guys on the defensive glass for Kentucky. Everybody getting a touch for the Wildcats as well. All five players have already touched it since it crossed the midcourt line. Johnson double team. Gets it back. Slips inside, wide open Lyles. For the offense, but Lyles can't knock down the three. Well, Trey Lyles almost got an offensive rebound there. Look on the reversal. All the way on the side. That was a two dribble move, but got all the way into the middle. He certainly covered a lot of ground there, went straight up. That's a really pretty play by Trey Lyles. Last time Kentucky ran this play, they got a quick lob. 
as you which gives him such a different look at the point at a, a five nine guy with a great quickness from a six six point guard like Andrew Harrison. Well he's a Tyler Ulysses is a true point guard. And Carter Johnson's going to get called for the push off. Uh, two hands in the back of Cliff Alexander. And what Ulysses brings it's a different look than Andrew Harrison. Andrew Harrison is a big guard that can really attack the lane. He can back you down. He can post you. Can shoot over you. And what Ulysses does, he can get up underneath you. The pressure for 94 feet really make it difficult for you to get into an offense. And he's an excellent passer, excellent with the ball. Nice pass. And Alexander fouled hard. A good dish from Selden to set that up. Yeah, the pass ahead, and Selden immediately took it to the basket, drew the defender. And Kentucky was forced to foul to stop Cliff Alexander for getting an easy dunk. And that was where Dakari Johnson came over. Trey Lyles has got to get into the middle of the floor. Let's talk a little bit about the conferences in which these two programs reside. Kansas and the Big 12, of course, they've won or shared the regular season title 10 years in a row. You look at Texas, a team we'll see later this week on the ESPN Family Networks. Also, Oklahoma. Kansas State will be solid again. How do you size up the Big 12? I think the Big 12 is a really good league. They play a double round robin with their 10 teams. Yep. And I, I think Texas is going to challenge. Miles Turner is an outstanding freshman big guy. Isaiah Turner is an excellent point guard. You know, they, they've got great depth, terrific size, excellent defensive team. I think they could score much better. But you'd have to be drug tested to take anybody but Kansas. They've won 10 in a row. Bill Self with a remarkable run in Lawrence says the shot won't go and eventually the rebound down to Lee ahead to Ewers with a full hit. The trailer's Lee and he's going to force the issue and draw the foul on trailer. Boy, what a pass by Tyler Ulis. Got the ball into the post and immediately Dakari Johnson looked over his left shoulder and Marcus Lee was diving right to the basket after getting that defensive rebound. Was really well done. And you get the ball into the post, even if a, the postman doesn't have an angle to the basket. That really gives you a lot of different options. And if you've got willing passers, and Dakari Johnson is that, he can kick it back out. They can repost, post deeper, reverse the ball. There are all kinds of things you can do that are going to give a problem to the defense. Many free throw blockouts is Kansas going to mess up? You know Bill Self well. You know what he values in his program. This is not something that aspect of the game is something he's going to be curious. But you can't have this in a game where you're trying to get back into it. You're not going to get back into it by allowing extra opportunities. I feel like that. they miss two free throws and they score. Just because Kansas doesn't do one of the easiest things you're going to get, which is a free throw blockout. You can see as they come up the court, the blue platoon's getting ready to come back in. Five for five reinforcements, as John Calipari says. Jayhawks have yet to score here in this half. 6-0 Kentucky in the second half. You know, Dan, usually when your opponent subs, you feel pretty good that you're doing something good. They got to get somebody else in there. When yeah. Kentucky subs, you're going, oh, geez. More of you? Because they're just as big, and they're just as good, and they're rested. So the Harrisons are back along with Collie Stein, Towns, and Poitras. And by Kentucky standards, this is a veteran group. Two juniors, two sophomores, one freshman. Kyluk has returned for Kansas. So back to the Kyluk in the corner. And the follow was missed. Trailer was right there for the putback and couldn't dunk it. Harrison on to his brother Aaron and he gets it right back. One thing we talked about briefly during halftime. There were some questions about the body language on the Harrison Twins last year. That appears to be much different this season so far as well. They've done a terrific job. They were very good over in the Bahamas. That's one thing that 
That was an open shot by Poitras and not a bad one, but that's not his game. His game is going to the basket, offensive rebounding, and running in transition. Foul on Aaron Harrison, a timeout on the floor. The lead's grown from 10 to 16. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. And Burger King's two for five dollar menu. Mix and match two large premium sandwiches for just five dollars. I do think we have a chance to be special. They're sponges, they want to be taught, they want to be drilled. We're different than what we've been in the past. We're going to be pretty quick on the perimeter, and, and uh, I think we should be a very fun team to watch. Uh, if you're a fan of the Kansas Jayhawks, it's been a fun ride ever since Bill Self took over. Ten consecutive regular season of Big 12 championships, either outright or shared. And as you look at the Power Five conferences all time, only the great UCLA teams of the, of the 60s and 70s had a longer run. In this day and age, Jay, college basketball, it's a pretty amazing accomplishment. It, it's absurd. I mean, Bill Self has been so consistent with his excellence at, as the head coach of Kansas, and he did it in other places. I mean, he was great at Illinois, did a great job at, at Tulsa, at Oral Roberts. But he's been magnificent at Kansas. And really, the only other program that's dominated its league, like Kansas has, has been Gonzaga out of the West Coast Conference. Ball still loose, and a foul. I think it's Poitras who reached out and knocked down Selden. What, what team would you say is the biggest threat to Kansas this year? I think Texas and Oklahoma are the two the two teams that stand out. The Oklahoma can really score. Buddy Heald is an outstanding shooter. Isaiah Cousins, one of the best defenders. And they just got Houston transfer Tayshawn Taylor eligible. So he's really going to help as a, a fifth starter. We'll see that down the Bahamas. The battle for Atlantis next week. Some tough sled for you and me over there. The Thanksgiving week, uh, Oklahoma in a first-round matchup with UCLA down there in the battle for Atlanta. And UCLA, uh, Steve Alford has really established a culture of passing at UCLA. They do a great job of passing the ball. Kevon uh, Looney, their freshman, a guy who's got size but also point guard ability, really has taken over for Kyle Anderson as one of the better passers. The trailer is Towns. And the rebound down to the Jayhawks, Cliff Alexander. Kansas still has not scored a point here in the second half. You could easily envision this year, Jay, where Kentucky holds a team like in the 30s during the game in, in terms of points, not shooting not field goal percent. It's certainly possible right? with the way they can defend. But give Cliff Alexander some great credit there. He did a really nice job of being big down in the post. He forced Carl Anthony Towns to foul him. He's draped all over him. That's two in a row that Alexander's been able to draw down there just because he has been aggressive in trying to post. So Towns picks up his third. He goes to the bench and Akari Johnson comes in. And this is one of the situations early, maybe the only one so far this year where John Calipari has gone away from the platoon system whenever there's been some foul trouble. Well, they're already in the one and one. He's got seven fouls in this second half. Kansas only one. So every time that Kansas is able to pick up a common foul, they're shooting free throws. And that was the first point of the second half of the Jayhawks. Five minutes and 21 seconds in. That's the one play. You get to the free throw line, that's the one place where Kentucky is not allowed by rule to block your shot. <laughs> I like it better when Perry Ellis is out there putting some pressure on Willie Colley Stein out front. I think you let those big guys just pick you apart. Johnson, a sweet feed from Harrison. The ball screen and immediate roll to the basket by Dakari Johnson. Andrew Harrison with the assist for the Wildcats, and the lead is 17. So Kentucky's not putting the same kind of pressure on the perimeter that it did in the first half. Kansas is able to make the passes they want to make. Alexander with the jump hook gets the bounce. Well, that was just too easy for Kansas, and they took advantage of it. That was not the same defense we saw in the first half from Kentucky. As you've noted, though, the two platoons do have a bit of a different personality. And the other platoon, would you agree, is a little more of the, uh, the energy get out in your face defense kind of platoon? Yes, and this is the one that's the better scoring. What a great move. Head and shoulder fake. 
by Aaron Harrison. Both, both Harrison brothers have played very well in the offensive end. Now Alexander's got to go get down into the post. He's able to switch off. He had a guard switch on him. Sheldon knocks down the jumper. Kansas offense has come to life here in the last couple of minutes, but they're still down by 15. Yeah, they got to get some stops. Kentucky has just dominated the painted area both on offense and on defense. Right now, Kentucky taking its time to get in to its offense and get the shot that it wants. Andrew Harrison pulls up. Follow good by Dakari Johnson. How much has he improved from a year ago? Well, you set the you set the ball screen out top. That forces a big guy to come hedge, maybe even switch. And all of a sudden, you got a guy rolling to the basket, shot goes up, and who's going to block him out? That's that rotation rebounding that is so difficult when you're playing against Kentucky. And the jumper at the other end to make it a 15-point game again. You see a new set of subs for the Wildcats on the next whistle. Excuse me, reinforcements. Because John calls him that doesn't mean you have to. <laughs> when did subs become a dirty word? <laughs> it's a crossover. And it'll go for Andrew Harrison. What a big time play. That's where size and strength Turning down the screen, refusing it, taking it into the middle of the lane, drawing the contact, and still finishing the play. Taking on that secondary defender and the tertiary defender, Perry Ellis. Boy, that was big time. Right, it's one thing to draw a foul. It's another thing to draw a foul and complete the play. It's a three-point play for Harrison. He'll now leave for Eulis. What a solid night he's having. And now Frank Mason goes from having to see over Andrew Harrison to having to try to deal with the in-your-face pressure of Tyler Eulis. And another rejection. The beat goes on for Kentucky. Timeout on the floor. Standing ovation in the building. It was 10 at the half, and Jay, the Wildcats have it right back up to 18. John Calipari, we've been talking about the platoons. Andrew Harrison with the tough finish against the foul. Aaron Harrison, his brother, with the head and shoulder fake on the closeout. The lingerie and the dick. <laughs> Do I owe him money now that he trademarks everything? <laughs> a lot of emotion in the building and a lot of it coming from John Calipari. He's going to be happy with what he's seen from his team tonight. They're of 18 on the Kansas Jayhawks, just wearing them down with their depth and their shot blocking ability and their athleticism and their length. Let's go back to Jim Calhoun. Coach, what do you see out there? Well, I see a lot of talent, number one. John's happy driving a Rolls Royce, a nice thing, you know, by the way. And thirdly, it looks to me like Kansas made a couple runs, came back at 10. Their body, not language, but their body. Spirit's willing, I don't know if sure what the body is right now. I mean, they've taken some shots. 10 is tough to play against, and it's a physical game. I think they got one more shot left, but I'm not sure. Right now, they're taking a lot of body blows. A lot of body blows. Happy to welcome Jim Calhoun, the Hall of Famer, to our ESPN College Basketball team this year, in addition to Shane Battier, who we heard from in a game number one tonight between Duke and Michigan State. I think they prefer to be called reinforcements, Dan. <laughs> Nice little move there, but Selvin can't finish. Gets it back. And Polly Stein has it. They will try to adjust in the air, and it's going to get blocked. Kentucky has dominated the paint. 3 of 12 in the second half now for Kansas. And for Kentucky, they're 7 of 13. They've got 28 points in the paint for the game to just 12 for Kansas. That is domination of the painted area. Stein 
across the lane, puts it up, around and out, and it's Kansas ball. ESPN's journey to the tourney presented by Sonic continues with the 2K Classic Championship game on Friday night at 7.30 on ESPN2. The Maui Invitational Championship next week on ESPN. Arizona is the big name out of the field out of Maui in the battle for Atlantis. Jay and I were talking about on November the 28th at 4.30 Eastern time here on ESPN with programs including North Carolina, Florida, and Wisconsin. Down there, left-handed little hook shot for Carl Anthony Towns. And you can run an out-of-bounds play, get the ball that deep. And your seven-foot freshman, Carl Anthony Towns, can make that kind of move with the left hand. Then you block another shot on the other end. Cal didn't like it. Or whether Lee didn't like it. Whether it's called a foul or not, Kentucky's up by 20. And you keep going after those. They are in the heads of Kansas now. And look, there, was there a little bit of contact up there? Yeah. But boy, that was mostly leather. That was all leather, frankly. You know, you got to cut the referees a little bit of slack here. They don't see block shots like this all the time. And I think what's incumbent upon officials, and this, it's always difficult to officiate that high up in the air. But you shouldn't moan, you, players shouldn't moan about a late call because you want to get let these plays finish. One of two at the line for Alexander. And a turnover. So it'll be Kansas ball. Kansas trying to put on some full court pressure. They've got to find ways to get extra possessions. They're not able to do it off the glass. So they're going to have to get some turnovers. Inside look, Alexander just too much size. Whether it was Towns or whether it was Lyles, just too many long arms for him to get the ball over. You got to get that ball up on the rim quickly. You shot fake. These guys aren't going for it, and it's just giving them an opportunity to recover and go up and block the shot. One of the drills that Kentucky worked on in shoot around today was the shot fake. And John Calipari kept saying over and over and over again, "Do not leave your feet. Do not leave your feet." I was always told it's impossible to leave your feet. That you, <laughs> you leave the floor. That your feet, go with, your feet go with you. That's a good point. I have never once in my life left my feet. <laughs> that would have been a first ever experience for you had you done that. <laughs> Devin Booker. He said trouble knocking down shots in the early going this season. Hey, hey, a little old school from Carl Anthony Towns. And a timeout for Kansas. Pulling away, largest lead of the night. Big Blue Nation is loving what they are seeing, Jay Bill, is here in Indianapolis. Well, they say you can never have too many guards. I'm starting to think you can never have too many quality big guys. Kentucky has got a lot of them. And welcome back to Indianapolis. Dan Schulman and Jay Billis, Andy Katz, Jim Calhoun, Reese Davis, Jay Williams, Seth Greenberg, and Kentucky and Kansas in the second game of the State Farm Champions Classic. A 21-point lead for the Wildcats. Here's a steal by Euless. And he'll be headed to the free throw line. And Tyler Euless just sizes you up. You show the ball, he reaches around. And takes it away with that right hand. He just, he's a terrific player. And gives a totally different look to Kentucky when he's running the point. And he comes in, Andrew Harrison. They're the tallest team in college basketball by a wide margin. Average height on the, on the roster. Imagine what they'd be without Eulis. But are they glad to have him? He may only be 5'9", but he's got a ton of talent. You turn, if, if you make a hand change like that, you've got to keep that ball when you... When you turn your back, if you're going to put it in your right hand, he's just going to reach around and take it. That's what the best guards do defensively, and Tyler Eulis is a really alert defender. All 10 players who have appeared in the game for the Wildcats all have played at least 14 minutes. None have played more than 17 minutes. 
you, it's hard to envision a situation this year, John Calipari stays with his system, Jay, where they get fatigued. They shouldn't. That's kind of the whole point of this, is you can play incredibly hard and not worry about getting worn out. You do not have to pace yourself, and you're going to be more productive over the course of those minutes than you would be otherwise. That's the 11th block for Kentucky. That doesn't include the couple that we thought were clean that were called fouls. I mean, there have been a lot of summit meetings near the rim. It's not like they're playing against an eighth grade team. This is a really good Kansas team with really good athletes. Uh, Kansas, and we talked about them getting challenged in the big play. Great pass. We talked about Kansas getting challenged in the Big 12 and talked about you know, Texas and Oklahoma. The other team that's going to challenge them is Fred Hoiberg's team, Iowa State. Uh, George Niang is back. After being injured in the NCAA tournament last year, he had a great summer, scored 30 in his first game. Monte Morris, one of the best passers in the country, just had nine assists the other night. And they're going to be really, as long can shoot it, they're going to be really difficult to play against. What about the SEC? Florida just lost at home to Miami. Who's the biggest threat to Kentucky in the SEC? Well, it's going to be Florida. Florida's a little banged up. They don't have all their players right now. Uh, the other team that I think is going to be dangerous for Kentucky and I think will be an NCAA tournament team that hasn't been of late is Arkansas with Bobby Portis and Michael Falls Rashad Madden That's a good team. Now, are they as good as Kentucky? No But they can beat you know if they play really well and Kentucky does it They can certainly win Eight minutes left in the game and a 23 point lead for Kentucky, John Calipari is fired up. His team is dominating. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. For auto, home, life, and banking, get to a better state. Arsenal check just a couple of miles away. The school at which Trey Lyles played and was named a McDonald's All-American. Also won a state championship there, though, as you well know, Jay. Having read in your opus, I know you well know. Originally hailing from the Great White North from Saskatoon. Family moved down to Indiana when he was seven years old. He's a, uh, a bright young talent, to say the least. Is it, are you okay with a Canadian named McDonald's All-American? Coming down here stealing American jobs. <laughs> you never see Americans no. going up to Canada being named Tim Hortons All Canadian. You are definitely endearing yourself to your Canadian fans. Right? <laughs> well, spending so much time around Leo Robbins. That'll have a lasting impact. <laughs> yeah. A lot of therapy. Yeah, John Saunders. <laughs> Kansas has scored eight, count of eight points here in the second half. Well, the funny part is, it, is that's a, the first shot that he's hit from the perimeter. He really struggled, even though he took good shots in the first half. And you can see the smile of Devin Booker. His father, Melvin Booker, played at Missouri. He was all big eight. And Booker's got a really nice stroke. You know, Kansas has one more offensive rebound than does Kentucky in this game, but Kentucky's got 19 second chance points off its 15 offensive boards. Kansas only has seven. Kickball. Trey Lyles has done a really nice job defensively, but a really good cross court pass. That ball just can't get through there. But Devin Booker ready to shoot when he caught it. John Calipari. It's really enjoyed seeing him make that shot just because he hadn't shot the ball well at all. Reinforcements. Yeah, that's a lot of boots on the ground for Kentucky. And the boots are all like size 20. Tremendously impressive performance by Kentucky against a team that probably will wind up being one of the best in the country by the time it's all said and done. You know, the funny part that Kentucky has played so hard defensively. I mean, it's not like they've overwhelmed them just with their scoring. They have shut Kansas down. 
And when you have a bunch of guys that are so, you know, have such big reputations looking to go into the NBA and the stereotype is, you know, they're not gonna they're not gonna get down, play team defense, they're not gonna share the ball. And they do. It's really impressive. This John Calipari deserves credit for, for getting the goal by into the team council. Yeah, he does deserve the credit, but you gotta give credit also to the players for yeah. doing it. Yeah. Thursday morning, the Puerto Rico tip-off begins on ESPNU. Sunday, the championship game, 6.30 p.m. on ESPN2, including the Connecticut Huskies, who have obviously had a lot of turnovers since they won the national championship a year ago. Shabazz Napier among those gone. And uh, Ryan Boatwright now gets the bulk of the ball handling duties for the Huskies. Yeah, Ryan Boatwright becomes the Shabazz Napier, and can Rodney Purvis become the Ryan Boatwright? They also got a, an excellent player in Daniel Hamilton who's going to be a pro. That's his second. To the line, Devontae Graham. Devontae Graham at the line. 6 2 freshman out of Raleigh. It was important for them to win over UC Santa Barbara a few days ago. At 14 in that game, made some big shots, and he's going to be a really good player. Dynamic at the point. Started off at Appalachian State, wanted to transfer, they wouldn't let him go. So he wound up at Brewster Academy last year. There's that head and shoulder fake by Harrison. Switches hands, misses the layup, ran down with the rebound. And Harrison hurt. He's holding his right wrist, Aaron Harrison is, as he comes back down on defense. And standing out of bounds when he caught the ball is McKaylee. And Aaron Harrison's going to come out of the game. Dominique Hawkins is going to take his place, make his first appearance of the game. But the concern right now is for Aaron Harrison and the right wrist, it appears. Well, you hope he's going to be okay. Didn't see him when he went down, but you're right, he is still holding that right wrist. Goes up with the left hand, absorbs a little bit of a bump, braced his fall. And hopefully for him, he just jammed it. So Hawkins into the game for the first time. An important player at times for Kentucky last year. A little bit deeper down in the rotation this year. As Poitras with a strong move draws the foul. But Hawkins, a guy when needed, should the situation arise, can give them some energy and defense off the bench. And he can really serve as a defensive stopper. And how good is your team when Dominique Hawkins and Derek Willis are your 11th and 12th men? Yeah. Nine McDonald's All-Americans on the Kentucky roster, same as we saw the Duke roster in the first game. What do you think of Duke's performance against Michigan State? Excellent. Uh, I thought its guards, Duke's guards, played very, very well. Quinn Cook, Tyus Jones did an excellent job. They combined for, what, 36, 37 points. Shot a very good percentage. Justice Winslow was excellent. And every time it seemed they got the ball into a little open for something good happened when he touches the ball he can score but he also draws a lot of attention and can pass Michigan State a little bit completed really with only eight healthy scholarship players right now I like their team I really like Michigan State I think Wisconsin is the best team in the Big Ten I think Michigan State is right behind and that's a team that can challenge and I think Tom Izzo is going to really enjoy coaching this team over the course of the year, because they're just going to get better and better. I know I've said this before, but I haven't said it in a few minutes. Kansas has scored eight points here in the second half. That's it. Another long, long drought here for the Jayhawks. It's 26-8 Kentucky in the second half. Good ball movement. Poitier short. See, the move he made on his last possession where he got fouled along the baseline, that's his game. You know, he can make an open shot, but he's not a good shooter even when he's wide open. And that's not where he's going to make his money on the pro level. Evan Manning is into the game for Kansas. Danny's son. As Will Shelf goes deeper into his bench, here's a, a look at some of the highlights from game one. That was early in the game, the open side ball screen rolled to the basket, and when he gets the ball underneath, he's got such good footwork, he uses his body very well, able to spin, get to the other side of the rim, a magnificent touch, and get, gets rid of the ball quickly. You can throw the ball into 
Jalil Okafor off the block. He doesn't have to have an angle to the basket. But these big guys are all different. Okafor, a low post big. Frank Kaminsky, a guy who can post up but also step away and knock down a three, play pick and pop basketball. Montrez Harrell is an absolute beast, and I mean that in the most complimentary way. And Josh Scott at Colorado is having a, a terrific start to the year and has really improved his game. Harrell, the other night, I mean, how good was he at 30 points? Down Puerto Rico. Yeah. Knocking down perimeter yeah. shots has really improved his overall floor game. And I think for, it's awfully early in talking about a play. There's no player of the year race yet. That didn't start. We're still in the starting blocks. But, boy, Okafor and Harrell, Kaminsky. Good this guy's going to be right there. Sorry, Jay. Good sign for Kentucky. Aaron Harrison's back. Anderson's back. Into the final four minutes. The State Farm Champions Classic in Indianapolis, the fourth annual State Farm Champions Classic. Duke defeating Michigan State in the first game. All Kentucky here in the second game. Next year, nice job by Evan Manning. Next year it'll be in Chicago, the year after that in New York as they continue to rotate around with who they play. Ellis with a weak shot rebound. Well, 99 times out of 100 with that rebound, Perry Ellis would have gone right back up with it against Kentucky, dribbled it out. And he'll take the corner three. Alexander runs down the rebound. Mason for three. Holly Stein corrals for Kentucky. Kentucky doesn't have anything early. They just need to run clock. Holly Stein. Yes. 17 footer. Well, if he's going to make that, then you're going to have to go out and guard him. Now he bumps Ellis, commits the foul, and takes us to the final media timeout. What a performance by the Kentucky Wildcats. Back in Indy, Kentucky all over Kansas, and look at how they've shut them down. Kansas ended the first half on a run, an 11-3 run to get back with its hand, but it's been all Kentucky in the second half. Let's take a look at tonight's Better State Assist, brought to you by State Farm, and the assist tonight comes in the form of a block shot, Jay Billis. And there have been 11 blocks. Seems like more. But every time that Kansas has taken the ball to the basket, there has been a white shirt above the rim trying to knock it back and Dan you mentioned that no one in this game has more than 11 points Dakari Johnson with 11 points in 18 minutes Andrew Harrison with 10 points but instead of worrying about how many individual points each guy has what you're left with is wow yeah. just wow how many times have we said wow in this game at one time or another if you're not saying it you're thinking it. all 10 players for Kentucky have scored in each half and John Calipari obviously looks not only at the scoring by platoon, but at the defense by platoon. He used the word analytics several times during shoot-around this morning. Efficiency permitted in both the offense and the defense event. They can break it down anywhere they want. No matter how they break down this one, it's been, as you said, it's been a while. You know, and I don't think, I think Kentucky has a, a ton of room for improvement as an offensive team. Their half-court offense has not been what John Calipari would like it to be. They have not been efficient in the half-court. You know, they've only scored 66 points with a couple minutes to go, but their defense has been so dominant that that gives them a 20 with 66 points. They've got a 26 point lead. I mean, that's remarkable. Their defense has been great. Manning misses the three. Holly Stein another rebound. Two minutes to go. I think in the first week of the season, no team has made a louder statement than Kentucky has made tonight. Derek Willis off the bench. And look at the bench erupt as he knocks down the three. Derek Willis would start for a lot of really good teams in America. And on this Kentucky team, he's probably characterized as the 11th or 12th man. And he played very well this summer when Trey Lyles and Willie Colley Stein were out on that six game tour of the Bahamas. There he is again. Nice cut after making the post feed. He played very well this summer in the Bahamas on that foreign tour. Foul on Selden. 
And Bill Self is really going to empty the bench now. And Christian Garrett, Tyler Self, Bill's son coming into the ball game. And as much as Bill loves Tyler, I don't think he wanted to play him unless he was up 30. And I don't think he anticipated that in any scenario. And John Calipari will empty the rest of his bench as well. The third platoon. This is an uncommon scene for Kansas. Yeah. That shows how well Kentucky has played and how good this team is, especially on the defensive end. Seventy to forty for Kentucky. They have held Kansas to twenty percent shooting from the field tonight. Would not have guessed it coming in. I think some that question Kentucky after its lackluster first half against Buffalo. I think the questions uh, have been answered of why so many people voted Kentucky the number one team in the country before the season. Self misses the jumper. Offensive rebound for Manning. Into the final minute here. Nice pass. Garrett. Short on the jumper. And a long rebound down to the Wildcats. Sam Malone with the ball for Kentucky. Guys who don't often get a chance to play on both sides getting a couple of minutes here at the end of this one. A lot of work behind the scenes being the scout team. Running the suicides, doing everything that everybody else does. No basket, no basket. Foul before the shot. Foul on Tyler Self. And EJ Florio to the line. And this is the best part. Look how happy these guys are for those guys. Well, they know how hard these guys work. Yeah. And their teammates. Shot clock turned off. 72 40. And a steal by Willis. And John Calipari says, don't do it. No more shots. What a night for Big Blue. What a night for the Wildcats and the platoon and the defense. What a statement they just made. And as you said, Jay, they could have been better with the offensive end, and they won by 32 points. They're not as good as they're going to be. Yeah. But what a statement that Kentucky has made about how good they can be. Like, this is a good Kansas team, and a team that is going to be a factor throughout the season, not only in the Big 12, but nationally and in the NCAA tournament. Kentucky is legit. Let's go to Andy Katz and John Calipari. All right, thanks, Dan and Jay. Well, John, how do you explain the way you guys absolutely dominated Kansas from start to finish? We defended. I mean, that's what we did. And Kenny Payne's been saying it from day one. If we can get these guys to lock down defensively because we're so long and athletic and we keep coming at you in waves, we don't have subs. We have reinforcements. Here comes the next guys. It's like tanks coming over the hill. How does a team beat Kentucky going forward? You could shoot threes. You could get us in the post. We foul, fouled like crazy. We kept them on the line. We got a long way to go. We executed good. Andrew Harrison was unbelievable today. Tyler, you got two quarterbacks that are running your team. But Andrew stood out because he ran us. He defended. And then Devin finally made a shot. We, we were just trying to get him to make a shot. But they, tr they struggled scoring in the post. That's, that's why they couldn't get points. So often teams, especially younger players, have a hard time buying in defensively early in the season. How did no, you guys no, get? No, no, no. You disagree? They have, a, they have a hard time buying into two platoons. 
Now I want to know how many players across the country would say I I'm not I would not give up my minutes for the team. You think about this. These these kids are all McDonald's all Americans and playing half a game. It did it hurt their rhythm. It didn't hurt their rhythm. No but I mean, they're they, winning pretty handily. Well they just they're playing off of one another. We had a we only had six turnovers. Think of that. That's that's when you're playing offensively. I don't know if it'll stay this way. Let me just say this. They will dictate what we do. Whether guys get more minutes or less, it'll be dictated on the court. Thanks, John. Thanks. Back to you guys. <laughs> All right, Andy, thank you. John Calipari's Wildcats with a statement. 72 to 40, they defeat Kansas tonight. For Jay Billis Handicaps, the Game Day Gang, and everybody who helped put the Champions Classic together tonight, I'm Dan Schulman saying thanks for watching. So long from Indy. Sports Center is next.